Hello folks, good afternoon. Welcome back to Advanced Higher Inorganic Chemistry. I'd like to talk to you today about spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the science of using uh, light that's either being emitted from a sample or absorbed by a sample and it will tell you um, two things. It will tell you which elements are present and also tell you how much of the element is present. So it is an incredibly handy tool um, which we sort of stole from the physics department really, because they love their telescopy and microscopy, don't they? But we're pinching it for spectroscopy. Um, did I just say physicists love microscopy? What a muppet. That's biologists. Moving on. There are two different types of spectroscopy that we need to know about. There is absorption and there is emission. I think we'll start with emission first. Um, emission is basically what's happening in the sun. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of atoms that are up at ridiculous temperatures. Um, and what happens to the electrons in those atoms, we saw in the last video, the electrons get promoted to a higher energy level. And then as they collapse back down again, they give off a whole bunch of uh, light, which is unique to each element. Um, so in the lab, how do we do this? We have a sample. We heat the sample, usually in very high temperature flame. Um, and the sample gives out light of a whole bunch of... Uh, unfortunately, I've done it all in red. Apologies. I should mix up the colours a bit, shouldn't I? Um, and if we analyse that light, then we can tell... Uh, we get a spectrum that looks a bit like this. A typical emission spectrum. We'll have, say, intensity here. Uh, and wavelength here. And you get spikes... Um, of varying intensities and at very specific wavelengths. Uh, and then we can figure out which element that is and the height of the spike will tell you how much of that element is in there. So intensity tells you how much and the pattern, the individual fingerprint of these wavelengths will tell you which element we're dealing with. Um, excuse me, just pause this two seconds. Sorry about that. So emission spectroscopy is very cool. Um, it is what enables us to tell what is in the atmosphere of far off planets and stars, with, despite ever going, never being able to go there. Um, you know, we search for worlds with water in their atmosphere. Well, how does that work? How can we possibly know that? And the answer is a very cool combination of both emission and absorption spectroscopies. I'll come back to that. Um, but in the lab, um, emission basically is like a candle flame. If you want a simple picture to keep in your head, it's a candle flame, which burns with that nice yellow colour because it contains lots of carbon uh, particles which emit a broad spectrum, mostly in the red and yellow end. Um, that's emission spectroscopy. Tells you what and how much of the element there is. So absorption spectroscopy, how does that uh, vary then? Um, Absorption spectroscopy is the reason that iron brews orange, actually. I don't know if you ever wondered about that before. I've kept you awake at nights, but why is iron brew orange? And the answer is absorption spectroscopy. Because uh, what we do in absorption spe spectroscopy is we have a sample of light. So we have a light sample here. And it's given off uh, the whole spectrum from um, red through to green. Uh, and blue, say, for example. So the whole spectrum's coming off here. In other words, it looks like a white light. Um, then you have your sample in here. And then you have a detector here. Uh, and the output of an absorption spectrum will look quite different to this. Um, it's going to look much more uh, like this. We have still have intensity. Um, and we'll come back to this in the organic later on, but uh, you'll have spikes of light that has gone missing as this sample has absorbed specific wavelengths. As you can see, it's sort of the complementary to this. Uh, and as I said before, if you look at the wavelength of these individual spikes, each element will have a certain pattern that goes with it. And this time, how far down effectively, how much light's gone missing, will be an indication of the concentration of your sample. Um, 
you can also do, a, a, normally, if we're in the lab at this point, we're going to do an experiment on, the, on absorption spectroscopy. Um, you can, instead of having multiple different wavelengths, you can focus on just a particular wavelength. Uh, for example, I said, why is iron blue orange? And the answer is because all these colours of light that are going through the iron brew, only the orange light that's red and yellow makes it through. Uh, all the blue, probably most of the green, disappears. Uh, and that's why iron brew is actually orange, interestingly. Uh, so what you could do, and or counterintuitive though this is, if you wanted to know the concentration of your iron brew, if you diluted your iron brew down, some disreputable backstreet iron brew dealer is cutting their iron brew with water, um, and if you wanted to determine how much of that was, common sense might suggest that you would take your iron brew sample and shine orange light through it. But if you think about that for a second, this is common sense turned on its head because all of that orange light. So 100% going in there, you'll get 100% coming out. Even if you replace this with just a sample of water, this would tell you nothing. Instead, what you should be putting in is one of the colours that is absorbed by the iron brew. So if we fire blue light in here, the higher the concentration of iron brew, the less of the blue light is going to make it out the far side. Uh, this is an experiment which um, hopefully we get to do in August. Um, and we uh, try to find out how much manganese is in a paperclip. It's a classic chemistry experiment because we turn manganese atoms uh, with a zero charge into manganese 2 plus ions and then we zap them all the way up to... I nearly told you the secret there. Well, let's turn them into just permanganate ions. Uh, which, as you know, are a lovely deep purple colour. Um, and that means the more purple your solution of your paperclip is, the more permanganate, the more manganate, manganese, sorry, there was in the original steel. Um, we'll come back to this in more detail later on. I think that's all we want for spectroscopy for now, though, folks. I did say that I was going to talk about far-off planets, wasn't I? Here is a far-off star, light years away from here. Um, and what we can do is we can measure the output, the emission spectrum of this star. Uh, and then, when a planet passes across the surface of the star, like that, the planet's atmosphere will absorb, like this, some of these lines. And that means we can actually tell which elements are in the atmosphere around this exoplanet, despite never ever going there. And a wonderful combination of emission from the star and absorption from the gases in the atmosphere. Thanks for listening. Bye.